I remember just thinking, I think it was at that point I kind of realized me planning to go to school one day, it's, it's, it hasn't happened yet. And I, I don't think I should wait for it to happen. Yeah. So let me just start. And the drawing software I used uh, already had animation capability. I just wasn't using it. So I was just like, eh, I'll just start animating. And Why not? I made a, a 10 second clip of uh, this character called Fazzo. I mean, I've, I've always been a fan of animation and comics and all of that. Yeah. And of course, I've always been a fan of anime. Um, but when I was younger, I had a lot of trouble with my health. I still do. Yeah. But it was particularly bad when I was younger and I had to go to school. But I couldn't go to school, so I was home a lot. Yeah. I was alone. So I, I didn't have much to occupy me except when I got into anime, yeah. I kind of filled that gap. And I had been drawing for all my life, but when I was a teenager, that's when I kind of came back into it. And I watched this anime called Bleach. And yeah. like once I started watching Bleach, I got back into making comics and like I had a dream to always have to, to like eventually have my own animation. Yeah. So that's where it started, and it kind it's of always yeah. kind of been at it since. Yeah. <laughs> so that's interesting, um, because then the thing I would ask is, um, you say this discovery starts like in high school, isn't it? Uh, at least where you start actively thinking about, hey, yeah. I want to pursue this. Yeah. Um, what happens when you when you leave high school? Do you keep drawing? Do you? you need you what path do you take there and how does the the animation then come back into your life mm. so before i i chose animation or like comic books yeah i, I wanted to do like very scientific things because i was always an academic yeah so like i i was interested in comics and animation but i i just did that as more of a hobby but i wanted to to like do sciences or computers or stuff like that. But again, with the health, kept making that a lot more difficult. So I just kept falling back onto like just writing and drawing. And eventually I was like, I, I've put more hours into this than I have in school. Yeah. And I really like doing this. So I think I should just go with that. So initially I wanted to go to uni for animation and comics. But uh, if you're in Zimbabwe, you, you know the story. <laughs> That's a really tough yeah, thing to yeah. pursue in Zim. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so I, like, I wanted, I wanted to, to do it like the right way in like the SAs or the Canadas or the USA. And I couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. So when I left high school, finished my A-levels, I was just like, uh, let me try and do it by myself and maybe I'll get some money and then I'll eventually be able to go to school. Yeah. But then here we are, like six years later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm already like working now. So I was just like, eh, it's, it's fine. I can just... I'm kind of there. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of there. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. I hear that. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's so hilarious. But so you start, you... Yo, that's, that's daunting because... So when you started, um, like after high school, mm. uh, in this period, because I assume the approach you have to it is, like you said, I'm learning, but I'm also looking for opportunities to actually make money so that I yeah. can then go to school. Mm. So um, if you do remember, like how how early did you actually start uh, making money from uh, from animation, illustration, your drawing, etc. Uh, I was 21 and I remember vividly because like the first time uh, I genuinely got paid to, to do something creative. Yeah. Uh, at the time, it was a lot of money for me as someone who's coming out of school. Yeah, in your context. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and I knew I was 21 because uh, I was listening to a song called 21. Uh, it was called One, 
but the singer was singing about being 21. Yeah. And I remember it, it being like, I was like, ah, this is so cool. I'm, this guy is singing about how yeah. he got his big break at 21. And that's the same thing that's happening right now. So yeah, I remember I was 21 and yeah. it was a writing gig. Um, so after that, I went into character design and started doing comics and then eventually animation. Yeah, yeah. And so my curiosity there is because naturally, right, uh, the perception, especially for people who are not uh, exposed to this uh, community or industry, but industry is a stretch really, right, uh, within uh, Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. people would be inclined to wonder where are the opportunities and how do you find them? So like as that 21 year old, how do you come upon that opportunity? Is that something you remember? Yeah, um, not specifically, yeah. but I know that being in communities like Comic Exposed, like there's a community here called the Comic Exposed where like all the digital artists, whether hobbyists or professionals, they all kind of gather there yeah. and we talk about our interests in movies and the entertainment field. Yeah. So just getting to know people in those in that kind of community uh, led me to like some of those people going, oh, we have a thing on that day, do you wanna come? There's, there's gonna be people doing this and that. And you, you keep, if you stay in touch with those kinds of people, you eventually get invited somewhere and then yeah. an opportunity comes up. The domino effect. Yeah. One thing leads to another. Exactly. A 21 year old is getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and probably thinking they've, you know, figured out life and they're good to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so then I would ask you, um, how long do you, can you say you've been writing comics? I think it, it would be like, I'd be kind of lying if I said ever since I was in primary school because I don't count those. Those are no, just no, no. like <laughs> comic strips. <laughs> things I did in the middle of class. But, but don't they count? I don't, I don't think they do. Why? Well, they do in some sense, yeah. but even if you ask me to show you a comic I did a few years ago, I'll be really embarrassed about it. So it's, it's worse <laughs> if I think about something I wrote when I was 10. So I guess I would say ever since I was 16, yeah. um, I was always into creative writing, but like 16, 17, you kind of, you start getting a little angsty and sometimes you drift into poetry. And I remember doing poetry yeah. for some time because like, if you can finish a poem in like 10 minutes, you're done. If it's a book, you never finish writing yeah. that book. <laughs> so <laughs> it started with like poetry and then I started writing. Uh, I would always be writing a book that n no one has ever read. Yeah. Maybe a few of my friends that I would show some chapters, they would read it, they'd be like, this is good. You should keep at it. And I would keep at it, but I would never release the books. Yeah. <laughs> so with, with comics, uh, I'd just be doing that. And then there's also the visual medium. And I could be done a little quicker because I'm the kind of writer who likes to plan everything until like, I, I don't want to write something. And then a year later, I'm like, ah, that book sucks. So that's how I was in yeah. the beginning. Yeah. So comics were like a quicker way to get my stories out. And the ultimate goal is always animation. And at the time, I didn't know how to animate, so comics were like yeah. the best of both worlds. Yeah, it's like when I then figure out how to animate, I take these stories exactly. into and I put them into like that medium. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. that's really interesting. That's so interesting because it's actually something that you're now doing, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. With with Mutupo, um, but we'll actually get into that on. In a few minutes, uh, okay. in a few minutes, because I, I thought the time you were writing, you were also learning how to animate, but as you just said, uh, no, that wasn't the case. 
So when did you then learn uh, to time it? Is this like after high school or like when and then how? This is way really after high school. It's about three years ago. Um, I think there's an, it's an animation company called the Triggerfish. I think they're in South Africa. Yeah. And they were having this competition where they were inviting people to do 10 second animations and submit them. So I remember just thinking, I think it was at that point, I kind of realized me planning to go to school one day, it's, it's, it hasn't happened yet. And I, I don't think I should wait for it to happen. Yeah. So let me just start. And the drawing software I used uh, already had animation capability. I just wasn't using it. So I was just like, eh, I'll just start animating. And Why not? I made a, a 10 second clip of uh, this character called Fatso. <laughs> so That's funny. I'm Fatso as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that was my first animation. Uh, yeah, I, I think I made two 10 second clips and... I was just like, this is, this is, this is fun. Let me just keep doing this. And yeah, it's been three years now. I've just kept yeah. doing it. <laughs> kind of how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> kind of how it goes. So when we started this, I mentioned that um, I wanted to interview so bad uh, around the November time. But to be fair, I reached out to you, I think before, before that, that, way yeah, before yeah. that, I think around August or something like that, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. Uh, but around November, there was like a lot of buzz because um, you started putting out trailers uh, from Tupo. Before that, like you had said, August, September, August, August, September, October, uh, you were making calls for like voice actors. And so there was like a lot of momentum around the IP of mm -hmm. Tupo. Yeah. Um, is it fair to say that it's like your most popular work today? Yeah, it's, it's definitely fair to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I, yeah, I think it's the thing that people know me for. Yeah. Uh, people who aren't my friends, yeah, they know me as, as the guy who made who makes Mutubo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, with that, couple of things I'd love to explore. Um, mm -hmm. When did the idea for that come to you? And. Um, Let's start with that, you know, like when uh, did that idea come to you? When uh, it was 2018. Yeah. And I had a dream about it. <laughs> no, I love uh, that. It's, it's, it's not that deep. It was just... <laughs> <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds like that. It, it does sound deep, but it's really not. Uh, anyone who knows me personally knows uh, I'm a vivid dreamer, I'm a lucid dreamer, so yeah. like I have, I have a very active dream life. So yeah, one day I just had a dream where people could turn into animals and it was kind of like a competition and it was televised. And when I woke up, at that time I was trying to start writing short stories. So each time I woke up with a cool idea, I would just write it down. Yeah. So that's one of the ideas I wrote down. And I was a big fan of this cartoon that I used to watch on ZBC a long time ago called Visionaries. Yeah. So I remember when I started trying to explore Mutubo, uh, I was thinking of Visionaries a lot. So I was like, eh, let me, let me kind of try to do something like that. Let me develop it a bit more. Um, there's something like visionaries with with Mutubo yeah. like animals. I'm like, eh, that's cool. I I usually did superhero stuff, uh, cause like I I'm, I'm really into superheroes. If it's not anime, it's superheroes. Yeah. But I don't know for some reason I was just like, this is this is something that could. I could broaden my writing capabilities. So let me try to to do that, and. Yeah, I, I think I made like two chapters of the comic initially in 2018. Yeah, that's, that's how it initially that's started. started. Yeah. yeah, that's quite interesting. Um, because when I read it and then, because I think I've, I've read the first, um, 
Up until you posted the update on, on Webtoons, was that the first six chapters? Seven chapters. Seven? Yeah, yeah, I think I, I think those are the ones I, I had read up to. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was fascinated and, and, and wondering, you could have told any story, like you're saying, uh, you're a writer, you're writing a lot, you have a lot of like comics, ideas. Mm -hmm. um, why did you feel that was the story? So maybe the way I'll then rephrase that is, um, mm -hmm. Why is it the one that stuck? Because I'm assuming the way creators work is there's like a lot of stuff. Yeah. And, but it's slowly rising up to the top and, and becoming more developed. And I mean, now you're already in too deep because there's an animation mm. coming. <laughs> <laughs> so why is that the one that, that stuck? The one that stuck. Um, well, like you said, like as creatives, you always have an idea. You always have a story and all of that. And... Uh, some some of my some of my peers uh, were always kind of making fun of each other because we all have stories that we start doing but we don't finish yeah. and I have a lot of those. So the first time I made Mutubo in twenty eighteen, uh, life kind of happened and then I stopped making it. Uh, and during that time, I was doing. I, I think that's when I started learning animation and I was trying to get better at writing as well. So when I was learning to be better at writing, uh, I remember one of the advices I got was like, as a creative, basically one of, one of the videos I watched on YouTube, yeah. I, I think the title was, how do you stick to one idea? Yeah. And <laughs> when I watched that video, I was like, yeah, this guy is talking about me. Cause I had like three <laughs> or four stories that I'd started and stopped. And I was like, I need to pick one and just stick with it. Yeah. So <laughs> during that time, um, there was this, there was this comic platform that I was trying to like start up in Africa yeah. and they were looking for, for stories. So I thought, why, why don't I, why don't I do that? Why don't I, Instead of starting a new story to to like bring these people, let me just take something from, from yeah. the past and finish what I started. Yeah. So I, I just picked Mutupo and a few people had known about the first version. So I was just like, hey, Mutupo is coming back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, it wasn't like a lot of people. It was like less than 20 people who knew about it. But I was yeah. just like, hey. You've been bothering me about it since 2018. It's, it's back. coming back. <laughs> uh, so I, I started rewriting and I had learned a lot about storytelling since the last time. So I felt like it had a lot more depth and I, I really wanted to explore that. It wasn't like a super deep reason, like I, I feel super connected to the story, so yeah. I should do this. But it started as that. And then there's this uh, initiative called Scripts and Bars that yeah, yeah, yeah. ran last year. Uh, it was sponsored by the British Council and I think they partnered with K Media. Yeah, it should from, be K Media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's so, not, don't sue us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So th they were kind of like uh, asking creators to, they were basically funding creative endeavors like yeah. if you have an idea we can fund it tell us what it is we'll see if it's good enough and so i had mutubo and i was like eh, i'll do mutubo like uh i'll be really serious about it this time uh, i'll put myself out there i'll make sure the writing is is as good as it can be yeah and i'll really put an effort to to make sure that people know about it so that when I use this story, when I when I apply using the story, it's kind of like a track record behind it. It's not yeah. just it's not just something that just came up. It popped, popped up. Out yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like I'm, I don't like being like on social media with my face and all of that. But I felt like it was a good idea if people had someone to associate the IP with. Yeah. So I I just started making weird short little videos on TikTok and Instagram. That's how I actually got into TikTok. And the idea was just tell people about the project, 
and see how they respond to it. Uh, and um, by some form of luck, they did. And about a year later, we've done seven chapters of the comic and we have a trailer for yeah. the animation. Yeah. We've got a book though, like, show it to the people, that's like a pretty significant... Yeah, yeah. Um, th this is the, the first yeah, volume, yeah. seven chapters worth, but uh, 144 pages. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic, man. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's fantastic. And all, all stems from finally deciding to stick with, with, with one, one thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, within the story of Mutupo itself, uh, won't spoil too many things. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are like certain themes that I'd love to touch on. Uh, I say it won't spoil because uh, people should go and read it. It's a fantastic uh, piece of IP and yeah, I, I shouldn't be the one to get into that for them. Um, one of the themes that uh, a part of the story um, is, is disability. And I always wondered when I was reading through those first chapters that I was telling you, essentially the first volume. Yeah. Um, as a creator, why is, is was that like a, a really like intentional thing to have that be part of the themes or it was just yeah it happened it, it was a, a bit of both yeah initially uh when i had the idea of shingai who's who's the main character yeah uh his, his totem is is the monkey soko so like he's about as you would expect a monkey to be, He's like acrobatic and all agile. shifty, agile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember when I was designing this character, in my mind, as a big fan of Spider-Man, I couldn't help but associate him with Spider-Man. Yeah. And when I would write his interactions with other characters and his fights, I like there was nothing I felt like I wasn't bringing anything new to the table yeah. when I was writing his interactions, his fights, and all of that. It just felt like I'm doing Spider-Man, but he's black, and he's, suddenly and black, he's from yeah. Zim, yeah. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I didn't want that. Like, I, I, wanted, I wanted to kind of challenge myself uh, as I was writing him. So I thought, I think it would be interesting if he was missing an arm. So like during his fights, he would have to like if you if you see like an acrobatic character how they fight you you what you get is what you see yeah. you're gonna yeah. think of spider-man immediately you're like ah oh, that's that's how spider-man fights yeah. so with him i was like i'm like i'm I'm putting myself into kind of a corner because i don't know how someone would fight with one with arm, one arm exactly. and i think i want to explore that i want i think i want to challenge myself with that so that was that was the idea it was just I think it would make for really interesting fights. Yeah. And then from there, um, after I did that, that's when it got into the intentional bit. And uh, there's, this, there's this writer that I've been learning from recently. Yeah. Uh, I don't know his name because he's anonymous on, on YouTube. He, he sure. has a pseudonym. Yeah. Maybe you can just send me a link and we can have that in the description. Yeah, Unless yeah. it's like a secret, yeah, you can you, you can because I think secret source of yours. <laughs> Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll keep him to yeah. myself. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we add him to this link. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, he, he has a lot of secrets that I don't want anyone else to know yet. So, <laughs> fair one, enough. <laughs> one of the things uh, he says that I really. Uh, resonated with was as a writer you're not supposed to make the decisions for your character like you're responsible for like the setting the premise and like creating the characters yeah but d don't be like a god in the story that's how you get plot contrivances and conveniences and things stop making sense yeah basically the idea was just make something and then just let it develop naturally so when I made this guy with one arm and uh, his dad is also in a wheelchair, yeah. I was like, okay, with, with, uh, with the premise that I have, like, how would this happen naturally? It can't just be like a thing that happened. Yeah. And 
like it was it, it was it was completely unintentional but once i found it 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 resonated with me and like i've been on that path ever since so the way i view that whole theme of like it's not just shingai it's not just his father there's other characters in the story there's another one who's blind uh Ooh, yeah, yeah another character has like an autoimmune condition it's like people who have they've kind of been dealt a bad hand in life yeah and like a normal person has like normal opportunities a normal path that they can take but because they've kind of been held back in life yeah. they they have to find another way yeah due to um, that limitation yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, i didn't want it to be like a what doesn't kill you makes you stronger kind yeah, of thing because like i, I, I yeah, i'm not a believer of that <laughs> i i don't like it when people say if you're suffering it's because it's supposed to make There's you stronger reason. yeah yeah i i really didn't want it to be something like that <laughs> to me i kind of saw it as they are suffering in some way so they have to make something work uh they can't do it like everyone else uh so if they want power they want whatever it is they want they just have to find another way and they yeah. have to like if you're normal you can maybe sit back and you can make it you can maybe achieve your goals somehow yeah. but if you're kind of being held back like these people are if if you just keep still that's where you always be yeah. so with these characters it was like the delta bad hand and like they have to make it work and i really identified with that cuz uh, i'm the same with uh my health problems it's something i can't change yeah and it's something i'll be dealing with i think for the rest of my life i'm not sure yeah. but because of that i had to make a plan i had to do something else that everyone else wasn't doing so that was it was that theme it was if if you can't do that and you're forced to do something else how is it going to change you what kind of person are you going to become yeah is it going to make you better is it going to make you worse what's going to happen so i just wanted to explore that yeah yeah because those those are really the 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 dynamics that are kind of explored in the comic which mm. i'm so tempted to go into but <laughs> i feel like we did ruin the story for anyone listening so let's not let's not do that right mm. um Another thing that uh, caught my my interest is you fused uh Zambian and Zimbabwean culture uh mm-hmm. in the comic is that to do with your uh your own story or was that like really just creativity uh that one's a really long answer yeah uh, my dad's Zimbabwean my mom's Zambian okay. that's it fair enough <laughs> fair enough fair enough I, yeah I kind of got a feeling that it would be something like that mm. because I was like yo this is like so random but I love <laughs> it because I love it because um <clears throat> there is then that also uh that sense of of novelty mm. that's detached from uh myself as just like a Zimbabwean reader yeah, yeah, yeah. then getting in to to tap into a so culture that culture yeah, from, yeah from from yours so was that, that was same... that was interesting like it was that way for me as well because uh my mom's from Zambia but obviously we live here yeah and like ever since she's been in my dad's family she's lived here yeah so i've kind of been a little separated from that part of my my heritage so part of uh exploring the culture of the story was me finding out stuff for the first time or like uh talking to some of my Zambian friends and asking them how how would you say this yeah. uh in 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 this native language etc and so forth so yeah it was i i felt that sense of novelty as well when i was going through the story and i think it's one of the things that make it a little fun for me to do yeah 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 i love that i love that and one thing i did notice uh, mm-hmm. and i and and do correct me if 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 this if if this is like a wrong thing or this is web tunes but one thing i i noticed when i was going through the comic is that mm-hmm. uh you seem to use color quite sparingly mm-hmm. like which is funny because this is black and white <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you you use 
color quite quite sparingly. Mm-hmm. Um, is that like an intentional thing or is that like a limitation? Was that like a sign of the times? What was going on there? <laughs> uh, well, if there's no color, it, it doesn't take as long to make. So it's a bit cheaper to make. Yeah. And apart from that, um, that's typically manga are in black and white. And this comic is really anime and manga inspired. Yeah. So I, I wanted to pay homage to that. Uh, and on top of that, uh, I really like color. And when I do use color, like I really like using the colors and the lighting to set the mood. I, I, like every panel I color, I try to go a little overboard. So I, I felt like even if I did like all the, if I did have all the time and the money in the world to make it in color, yeah. I felt like I would rely on the color too much and I wouldn't focus as much on maybe the anatomy or the perspective or the draftsmanship or anything yeah. else. So keeping it in black and white forces me to make the artwork interesting in other ways than just color. And if it's on web, if you're reading it on webtoon, typically like the last panel is in color. So yeah. Uh, a lot of people were saying uh, the artwork was really cool at the top, but like that last panel when you then introduced color, it was more impactful because like the contrast. Yeah. So I, it adds I thought like that a was a layer that wasn't there all along. Yeah, long. yeah. So I thought that was a happy accident. So yeah, if you're reading it on webtoon. Fantastic. That's a plug. <laughs> <laughs> that's almost um, that's almost quite similar to. Uh, story I'm told in that uh, the reason uh, initially we went for black and white mm-hmm. was uh, two things. Uh, the first episode we did was with Pius, and so I wanted the colors of their animation to pop. Ah. So our conversation would be in black and white, and then their work from Alula would be in, in color, color and pop. And then what I then realized was okay, this is actually this is impactful, and two, this saves me a lot of time in regards to like uh, color grading. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so we just we just stuck to Kept it. it in, in black yeah. And white. Yeah. And and now it's become uh, almost like a visual distinction of ours. So that's mm-hmm. that's quite interesting. And I love that there's that little um, little relation there. Mm-hmm. Okay. So is there going to be like an animation playing here? That's in color and in black and white. <laughs> we could do that. <laughs> we could do that. We could do that. <laughs> So, one of the things, you, it, it's good that you mentioned the last pain uh, being in color, mm. but one of the things that was always a constant on the last pains of those um, issues you were putting out was always that at the end of, I won't say each issue, mm. but I distinctly remember seeing at the end of some of those issues that you mentioned, Ritendo Ruizi, Justin Mutasa, uh, and Panache Chimache, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. Um, who are these people and what roles do they play in the creation of Mutupo? If not in the creation, then what roles do they play to warrant a, a credit? Uh, well, Panache Chimasha is, I would say, the biggest fan, the number one fan of Mutupo. Yeah. Uh, when I released it at first in 2018, he was a big fan and like when I stopped doing it, uh, I think he's the person who constantly reminded me Hey, are you gonna get back to this one day? <laughs> you need to come back what's, to this. <laughs> what's happening here? Um, but he's also an artist, so when I when I did bring it back in late 2021, 2022, uh, I hired him on as an inker. So yeah, he's. Please keep Mutu- 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 is the number one fan. I have like no idea what an inker is. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so when you're making a comic. <laughs> Uh, typically, I, uh, one of the things you'd recognize are like pencils, which is like the rough work. Yeah. So everything looks the way it's supposed to look, but the lines are messy, they're not clean, all of that. So the Inca uh, takes those pencils and draws on top to just make everything clean. Okay. So basically, the, he just cleans up my scribbles. Yeah. Uh, so he's yeah. good at that. So. 
uh, hired him as an anchor. I also hired uh, Justin Mutasa as an anchor as well. Um, but eventually, I hired him on as a cleanup artist in animation. Uh, what that means is it's yeah. the same thing I just mentioned, but with animation. And okay, fair enough. Like, he had never done anything like that in animation. He just learned it on the job and, like, it, <laughs> he was amazing. So, yeah, that's those two. Um, there's also Tinashe Mozoki, who around... At first, I did the first three chapters and I ran into a few challenges and I, I felt like I couldn't keep up with... I couldn't make the rest of the chapters yeah. in time for the deadline. So I had him on as another penciler. So some pencils I couldn't do, he would do them and then Panache and Justin would, would ink. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, he really saved my ass on, on, on that one because like at some points um, I would give him a script for something. Yeah. And the thing I had in mind, something I had written on the script, he would approach it in a different way than I initially thought but it would be in a better way. So like at first I was kind of helping him and then eventually I was just like, you know what, this chapter do it by yourself because yeah. you're doing great. So <laughs> uh, that's those three. Uh, and then of course, Arsendo Rizzi is my sister. Yeah. Um, she did the toning in the, the comic. She did the colors in the animation. Uh, and then of course, like with everything else, She's my sister, she's my best yeah. friend, so she was my support system throughout the whole thing. One yeah. of my support systems. Yeah. yeah, yeah, fantastic. I was always curious. I was always really curious that, you know. And so the reason I was curious is because um, of what you just said. All of these roles, there are like so many roles that you need uh, to yeah. put out a comic book. It's best belief, it's ex Extremely grueling work, especially if you're doing it alone. It's like, yo, Jesus Christ, what the hell? <laughs> it's a lot, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so I was always wondering how um, how you distribute that 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 workload. But it sounds like, yeah, you just you 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 really broke it down there. Yeah. So when it comes to the animated version of of Mutupo, the trailer mm -hmm. came out. Um, is it fair for me to ask when can we expect to like actually see it and <laughs> yeah let's start with when and then go into a few other things sure, sure. yeah uh, yeah this is a question i've been getting a lot <laughs> and um i try to not answer it because i i know i would answer it at least once a week every week um so the idea with mutubo was uh to to kind of go the, the anime route. Yeah. So typically with all of your favorite anime, it, it started as a manga. Uh, and then when it became popular enough, it was picked up as an anime. Yeah. So that was, the idea behind that is like, once it becomes an anime, the manga becomes a lot more popular than it was before because people now know the IP and Animation takes a lot longer than comic books. Yeah. So typically, when an animation based on a manga comes out, uh, when that comes out, uh, people watch the animation, uh, maybe the story isn't finished, they're like, I wanna see how it goes. They and go they back go to, to the manga, and then like the manga becomes more popular, and for a lot of people, the manga, since it comes from the original creator, yeah. That's like the definitive version of the story yeah. for them. So the idea was to, of course, have the story as a manga, but accompany a trailer with it so that like most people, they, they watch trailers or they watch animation. They don't read comic books. They don't yeah. read manga and yeah. all of that. So the idea was to attract people with the with the animated trailer so that they would come read the book and eventually we would also do that thing where we we keep making the manga we hope it does popular enough to then warrant an anime, an anime, an anime yeah, following yeah. it up 
Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I guess this is the first place I can say this now. Breaking news. <laughs> um, so the uh, my idea this year, the idea this year is to uh, instead of coming with a volume two of of the manga, um, like there's already a lot of pictures of the characters and in the in the trailer, like there's already like. A lot of people who've kind of latched onto certain characters yeah. and aspects of the story. So the idea this year is to do little animated short films based on each of the characters or at least some of the main characters. Yeah. Uh, and to just kind of repeat that same, what would you call it, that same system. Yeah. You make redirect an animation, people to yeah, redirect yeah. people to the, to the book yeah. and then eventually it'll become popular enough to to get an animated yeah. show uh working on that uh not afraid to, i'm not allowed to talk about it yeah uh but i'm definitely <laughs> working on it no it's cool fair enough yeah <laughs> it's it's more of an answer it's more of an answer mm. than i think we'll have anyone who's watched this asking you for like a set date so hopefully that makes your life Easier. I mean, maybe now people will be asking you when, when the character the film is yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess it never it never ends, but <laughs> never stops. <laughs> yeah. It's. I suppose it's a good problem to have because that means also like the community is is excited by your work, right? Yeah. Um. And so, in regards to these short stories, uh, mm. so is this like almost? Is this like world building? Not not world building, but essentially. Um, like building up to the story so that when because you talked about uh, characters right short films mm. based on some of the major characters is yeah. this so that when uh, someone gets to pick up on a book or they get to watch the, the animation later on they have more context exactly that's what it is yeah that's what okay it is. fair enough fair enough fair enough and so part of making uh, that trailer mm. was you doing something I assume, bad assumption on my part, but <laughs> I assume you had never done before. Uh, you put out a call for, for voice actors. Yeah, so in the trailer, yeah. they're like different voices. I assume yours is one of them. Uh, <laughs> yes, but not in the way you might think. Fantastic. So you're <laughs> going you're gonna, to you're gonna take me through all of this. <laughs> um, but yeah, there are a lot of different voices. Yeah, uh, yeah. How was that experience? Uh, just working with like different voice actors and uh, tackling a problem that you had never tackled before, yeah, like creatively at least. Uh, it was like that whole thing was was like a problem I'd never tackled before. Yeah. Because even with like um, getting funding for the whole project, it's something I've never done before, and at least from my perspective, it was a lot of money. Like it was just enough for the project, but. It was money I had never handled before. So a lot of times I, I doubted myself. I didn't know if I, if I could figure that out. Um, but just like with the voice actors, the idea was just like, there's a, there's a lofty goal that I'm trying to accomplish. And I recognize that I can't do it alone. Yeah. And I just have to get out of my shell and like invite people into this world that I'm trying to create. And I was really surprised with, with the amount of people who interacted with it. Yeah. And on a few occasions, like people would just send me messages, like really long messages talking about Mutupo and like the ideas they had when they saw it all. And a lot of it was stuff I hadn't even thought about. Yeah. It kind of took a life of its own, so like particularly with the with the voice actors, I had ideas of of what I thought each character was going to be like. Yeah. Um, but I was really intentional about like telling whoever would audition to kind of put themselves into the character as well, and a lot of people did that, and a lot of people brought a dimension to certain characters that I hadn't even thought about. Yeah. And 
some of my characters, like some of the characters that I wasn't really focused on became my favorite characters. Um, shout out to, uh, I don't want to shout out one person because yeah. the rest of them will get mad at me. <laughs> yeah, sure. uh, we, we've all <laughs> stayed in touch, so like we, we talk kind of regularly. Yeah. Uh, so I don't want to shout out one person and then leave out some of yeah, the other. Like, so they're actors. all great. <laughs> <laughs> they're all great. And it was, it was incredible working with them. Like, most times you would just give each person an idea of what you want and they do like one, two takes and they would get it immediately despite not being professionals. Yeah. And yeah, I remember some of like the main comments I got when people first uh, watched the trailer. They said the audio was a little sketchy, the audio quality, yeah. but they said the voice acting was really good. So that's just a testament to like how good they were like yeah yeah i wasn't really trying to to be like i want to showcase these badass juggernauts of the voice acting industry it was more like normal people yeah normal people putting their character into a character and i think that showed and a lot of yeah. people liked that yeah it came across it yeah. came across it was, yeah it was really dope it was it was it added a layer to it because like i'm saying i had read um the story mm. but when it when that dropped i was like yo this is like a whole different yeah thing. yeah it made me excited for something that you know something that i know already it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it, if that makes sense it does. and so the last thing i'll ask you is having worked on the book the first volume mm -hmm. having worked a bit on the animation and still working on the animation um what are some of the big differences between those flow, those those workflows? You know, making the comic and then working on the animation. Mm, that's a good question. With the comic, it's it's a little. I don't want to say easier. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely not easy. <laughs> like they both have their ups and downs, but. With the comics, the only thing I'd say is easiest to do is putting across uh, the vision that I have in a quicker way. Um, like if I wanna, if I wanna set a mood, I can do it in one panel or a couple panels. And that's done. Yeah. With with animation, it, it's a little different. Uh, you don't want it to be an animation, but people are like ah. This is just a picture with yeah. sound. You, you, you kind of want to add more to it. <laughs> so I'd say it's, it's, it's definitely strange. Animation definitely takes longer. Um, so like you'll get into situations where uh, there's, there's uh, an animated project I'm working on right now. Yeah. Uh, a trailer for, for a good colleague of mine that I'm doing. Um, I've been working on it for a while and like one of the things I often think about is when am I gonna finish this so people can see it? Yeah. Because like with a, with a comic book panel, like you can do a comic book panel in a day and it'll just give people a sneak peek and like they can see what's coming. Yeah. The animation, it could be like months in the making and if you show people what you have, they're like, ah, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't look good. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> it so potentially with, ruins the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like only only people who are actually animators and who have like an appreciation for the technical bits will be interested in like the background of that. But when it's like the general audience, like you can only show them the animation once it's done. And I feel that way even when I'm doing animated projects for other people and as a client, and you keep telling them what you're doing, and you're afraid if you show them, then they're gonna be like, this yeah, is very impressive. What, yeah. uh, what is this? Yeah. It doesn't look finished. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes you, you sometimes start rushing yourself because you're like, 
and they're probably thinking they got scammed. Yeah, I'm not yeah, making this thing anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the things that, that goes through my mind when I'm when I'm doing it. But definitely with for me animation is when I'm thinking about my stories and I'm when I'm even writing, um, I visualize it all in animation. So even though it takes quicker for me to put out a comic book, animation is always the end goal for me. That's like that's the ultimate expression of of my my vision. Yeah, uh, I'm definitely. I would say I'm a better comic book artist than I am an animator, but I definitely want to get to a point yeah. where like every every single thing I want the animation to say, it's saying it and my skill is catching up to the things the that I'm, yeah. I'm yeah, envisioning. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know Fair if that enough. answers the question. <laughs> I think that's where we are. I think that's just where we are. But I think it does because you you were, what we wanted essentially was just to paint a picture of how different how it different is, is yeah. right? When it comes to like approaching a comic versus when uh, it, it, it's animating. And, uh, and of to, course, the, yeah. you can do a comic by yourself. You can animate by yourself too, uh, but I don't advise it. <laughs> Why? Uh, a lot of sleepless nights and y you will definitely burn out and it won't look pretty. Yeah. So yeah, with, with a comic, you'll fare easier if, by your, if you're by yourself, but animation, get some help. Yeah. yeah.